हेलो स्टूडेंट्स अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग ग्रेट स्टेइंग सेफ सो फार वी हैव डन आर ऑक्सीडेशन एंड रिडक्शन चैप्टर व्हिच वाज योर फोर्थ यूनिट एज फार एज योर इनऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री सिलेबस इज कंसर्न वी आर लेफ्ट विद द लास्ट यूनिट दैट इज नॉन एक्व सॉल्वेंट्स विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद इट टूडे विद दिस क्लास so i would like to start with the non aqueous solvents as we all know most of the chemical reactions are carried out in solution phase it is very easy to carry out any reaction in a solution phase rather than reacting it in solid or in gaseous state it is always conven- convenient to carry out a reaction in when it is in solution phase as it is always easy to react or to orient the reactants well when they are in the solution phase also it is the nature of the so uh, nature of the solvent also plays a very major role in deciding about the course of reaction and the uh, and to decide about the type of product formed so it it is the solvent which is very important which plays a very important role in deciding which products are to be formed and which decides the course of reaction that how the reaction is going to be carried out so uh, before dealing with the non aqueous solvents i would like to give you brief idea about water which is a universal solvent now why water is called as universal solvent because of its magnificent properties that is it is easily available its ease of purification it can be purified very easily it has wide range of favorable phys- uh, physical and chemical properties its physical and chemical properties includes it has wide liquid range that is remain liquid in a wide range of temperature that is 0 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius it is odorless it doesn't give any foul smell high dielectric constant specific heat capacity is high it is non toxic its dipole moment is high with dipole mo- with high dipole moment we mean that it can dissolve polar solutes polar uh, reactants very easily into it it is neutral in nature heat of volatilization is high it is very safe to handle it has very high dielectric constant that is in the range of 80 now by high dielectric constant we mean that if we dissolve any polar compound or polar solute into the solvent its uh in uh, intermolecular uh, sorry inter ionic interactions between the cationic and the anionic part of the solute decreased by 80 times when we dissolve it in water this is a role of dielectric constant that what it does is a high dielectric a solvent having high dielectric constant it will solve it the cationic and anionic part of the solute separately such that it the solvation energy which is released in solvation is used to overcome the lattice energy that it can we can break the solute into cationic and anionic part for this a solute must be polar in nature so high dielectric constant supports the dissolution of polar that is ionic compounds into it so due to these properties what of water there had been a delay in the development of non aqueous solvents because water was used universally and it didn't give scientists time and idea that they need any other solvent for carrying out different reactions so there was a delay in the discovery of other solvents which can be used instead of water or which can be better performing at times than water such solvents which are other than water which are used for carrying out the chemical reactions are called as non aqueous solvents so now we know the definition of non aqueous solvents the solvents other than water which can be used to carry out the chemical reactions which are inorganic in origin are called as non aqueous solvents so i have used the term nas for non aqueous solvents this is not at all a universally acceptable abbreviation i have made it for my convenience so you'll find it just in my notes not anywhere else and you should not use it in your exams it is it can be written as non aqueous solvents it will be written as fully only non aqueous solvents not as nas so uh, coming back to the solvents solvents are majorly broadly categorized as organic solvents and inorganic solvents 
organic solvents are those which dissolve organic compounds inorganic solvents are those which are used for inorganic compounds so inorganic solvents are further of two types we can say that it is water that is aqueous solvent and the non aqueous solvents water itself is an aqueous solvent and for non aqueous solvents these are these can be ammonia h2so4 liquid hf liquid so2 out of these non aqueous solvents will be majorly focusing upon ammonia and liquid sulfur dioxide and different examples of organic solvents are ccl4 benzene acetone ether etc moving further before getting into the details of so2 and ammonia we'll discuss first the physical properties and their role in chemical reaction physical properties plays a major role in deciding about the what uh, in when we want to do any reaction it is the physical properties based upon which we shortlist our solvent based upon which we decide which solvent is to be used for this particular reaction it is the physical properties of solvents which helps us to decide which solvent is to be taken up for the particular reaction for carrying out a particular reaction and it also aids in the separation of products from the reaction mixture so the choice of solvent is very important and that choice will be made upon depending upon the physical properties of the solvent so first physical property is melting point and boiling point melting point and boiling point the knowledge of melting point and boiling point tells us about the liquid range of any of the solvent that is in what range it is going to it is going to remain as liquid for that we need to know the melting point at which it melts and the temperature at which it boils so for water liquid range is 0 degree to 100 degree celsius as already discussed for ammonia it is minus 77.7 to minus 33.4 degree celsius for liquid so2 it is minus 75.5 to minus 10.2 degree celsius so liquid ranges of ammonia and so2 are very low that is temperature is negative and for water it is 0 to 100 degree celsius quite handy at room temperature this is the reason why water is preferred over ammonia and sulfur dioxide but you in this chapter will discuss at times ammonia and so2 has have proved themselves as better solvents in some of the cases than water next physical property which we are going to discuss here is that is heat of fusion and heat of vaporization now first we should know what is heat of fusion and what is heat of vaporization so heat of fusion is the amount of heat required when we talk about molar molar quantities then we say the amount of heat absorbed by one mole of a substance to change from solid to liquid state is fusion and when one mole of substance is if we want to convert one mole of substance from liquid to vapor state then amount of heat required is heat of vaporization so these two values provide us idea of the nature and strength of forces which holds a molecule together in the respective physical states so here what we are doing is we are supplying some heat to a substance we are supplying some heat to a substance and change for changing its physical state from solid to liquid or for uh, heat of fusion and from liquid to vapor for heat of vaporization so what we are doing we are changing the physical state and we all know that physical state is related with the intermolecular forces so higher the energy is required for conversion of solid to liquid and liquid to gas higher will be the intermolecular forces higher will be the strength of forces which holds the molecule together so more the values of heat of fusion and heat of vaporization stronger the intermolecular forces much better idea about the intermolecular forces in a particular solvent is provided by a quantity called as trotton's constant so what is trotton's constant it is nothing but ratio of molar heat of vaporization to its boiling point that is delta h vap divided by tb for normal liquids trotton's constant is in the range of 21.5 if energy is taken in calories and temperature is in kelvin and it is in the range of 90 if energy is taken in joules and temperature is in kelvin so higher the value of trotton's constant more is the intermolecular forces present in the solvent as more will be the heat of vaporization generally water ammonia and hf they have higher value of trotton's constant than 21.5 
so we can say that these are having strong intermolecular forces present in their molecules so next property which we are going to discuss here is dielectric constant as we have already discussed what dielectric constant plays around this property is a measure of polar nature of the solvent and helps to estimate the solubility of polar or non polar substances in a substance in a solvent when we add some solute to a solvent what happens is it depends what a dielectric what a high dielectric constant having solvent does what it does is it weakens the force of interaction in between the cationic and anionic part of the solute out of which it is made up of we are talking about an ionic solid the ionic solid say we are talking about nacl and water water is having high dielectric constant of the range of 80 and nacl is an ionic compound it will break into na positive and cl negative so what water molecules will do it will decrease the interaction between na positive and cl negative by separating both and solvating both cation and anion separately by separating them so in a way in this way what will happen is solvation energy is released this solvation energy will be used to overcome the lattice energy required to break the lattice of nacl so here according to coulomb's law force is directly proportional to force is equal to q positive q negative divided by epsilon r square here q positive and q negative are the charges on the cation and anion epsilon here is dielectric constant r square is the distance between them between the charged particles so here from here we can see that force is inversely proportional to directly dielectric constant force is a intermolecular uh, sorry inter ionic interaction inter ionic force so higher the dielectric constant lower is the force so only a small amount of energy is required to separate the ions and hence it will dissolve if dielectric constant is high with low dielectric constant the solubility of ionic solids decreases for water dielectric constant is 81.7 at 18 degrees celsius for hf and water dielectric constants are high so these have more tendency to dissolve ionic solids or we can say ionic compounds and for ammonia dielectric constant is 22 so ammonia is having less tendency to dissolve ionic compounds next physical property is dipole moment dipole moment is related to dielectric constant an ionizing solvent will have greater dipole moment if it can be ionized that means it is having dipole moment into in its molecule hence dielectric constant is going to be high which is related to the polarity in the bonds of the molecule so the solvent with high dielectric sorry solvent with high dipole moment and high dielectric constant will have the tendency to dissolve polar or ionic compounds because greater the polarity greater are the solute solvent interactions and greater is the solvation energy again we are getting the concept of solvation energy that higher the solvation energy more easily the lattice energy can be overcome and it is going to dissolve next property is viscosity viscosity is a measure of fluidity of the solvent in the solvent of low viscosity it will be easy to carry out the operation like filtration precipitation crystallization here we have some examples water ethanol and ccl4 they are having low viscosity and conversely inversely h2so4 and high molecular weight hydrocarbons they are having high viscosity so based upon the property or based upon the process which we want to carry out if we know these physical properties of any particular solvent we can decide about choosing a particular solvent for particular reaction we need so knowledge of these physical these five physical properties is very crucial while choosing while planning a reaction these five physical properties are melting point and boiling point heat of fusion heat of vaporization next is dielectric constant next is dipole moment and the last one is viscosity so knowledge of these physical properties helps us to choose a particular solvent for a particular reaction which we want to carry out next thing which we want which i want to discuss with you is the types of solvents based upon the chemical properties non aqueous solvents are divided into four categories 
Now, before getting into the details of these categories, I would like to mention here that these four categories for these are uh, these are the four categories in which solvents have been divided. It doesn't mean that if a solvent belongs to first category, it cannot belong to any of the other categories. There are solvents which belongs to all the categories. This is not the uh, it is based upon the property that these categories have been categories of solvents have been made. If uh, we talk about the first categories where it is written protonic and non-protonic solvents. If a solvent is protonic then it cannot be non-protonic. But a protonic solvent can be acidic or basic or amphoteric. It can be ionizing or non-ionizing. It can be coordinating or non-coordinating. So let's start with the first category that is protonic and non-protonic solvents. Protonic or protic. We call it protonic solvents or protic solvents. So what are these? These are those solvents from which ionizable hydrogens that is H positive can be derived. Example is water, HF, HCN, H2SO4 and aprotic or non-protonic solvents are those from which ionizable hydrogens cannot be de derived. Examples are SO2, N2O4, C6H6. Next category is acidic or we can say protogenic. Protogenic by protogenic we mean that which can generate protons. Definition for acidic solvents is which have strong tendency to donate protons which can generate protons. So acidic or protogenic is the name defining which have strong tendency to donate protons that is H2SO4 and HF. Basic or protophilic solvents. Basic which have strong tendency to accept protons. The solvents which have tendency to accept protons or we can say protophilic or we can say proton loving. Amphoteric are the solvents which neither have strong tendency to gain or to lose H positive or who we can say whose acidic and basic character depends upon the reacting species. If the reacting species is acidic in nature then the solvent will behave as basic. If the reacting species is basic in nature the solvent will behave as acidic. So it can exhibit both the properties based upon the nature of the reacting species. So next category is the ionizing and non-ionizing solvents. So ionizing solvents are those which are capable of the undergoing self-ionization. And non-ionizing solvents are those which do not ionize at all. Examples are examples of non-ionizing solvents are C6H6. It doesn't get ionized as it is a hydrocarbon. So ionizing solvents, these are the example of ionizing solvent which undergo auto ionization. That is water undergoes auto ionization to give a cationic part and anionic part. Similarly, all these solvents undergo auto ionization and gives cationic and anionic part for both of them. Last category is coordinating and non-coordinating solvents. So what are these? The solvents which are capable of coordinating with the metal ion or anions of the solute. Example, ammonia, SO2 and DMSO. The solvents which form coordination complexes with some metal ions or we can say anions of the solute are called as coordinating solvents and the solvents which do not form any type of coordination complexes are called as non-coordinating solvents. So these are the four categories in which solvents have been divided protonic, non-protonic, second category is acidic, basic, first category consists of two subcategories that is protonic and non-protonic, second category is divided into three subcategories acidic, basic and amphoteric, third category is divided into two categories ionizing and non, so sorry, two subcategories that is ionizing and non-ionizing and fourth category is coordinating and non-coordinating solvents. So, if you are given any of the solvents, you should know by having a look at the formula of the solvent that it belongs to which category, whether it is a protonic or non-protonic, it is acidic, basic or amphoteric. So based upon the properties, we can decide about the category to which a solvent is belonging. That's it for today. So in the next class, we'll be discussing about types of reactions which non-aqueous solvents can, which, uh, which can be done in non-aqueous solvents. So this is it for today. Thanks.